Hello, I'm Dr. Tony Matthews from Griffith University and I'm delighted to be presenting our work on vertical schools as community hubs. And I present this work on behalf of our research team, which is me, Associate Professor Claire Newton from the University of Melbourne, Dr. Mirko Goralda from QUT, and also Associate Professor Severy Mayer from QUT as well. And so it's our great pleasure to present this work to you and we look forward to uh, your feedback in discussion uh, and around this conference. So what are vertical schools? Well, basically a vertical school is a non-tertiary school building of more than four storeys and generally when they're found we get one to two buildings total on site. So they're a very radical departure from traditional silo school design which is of course the more horizontal school design where you have buildings of one, two, maybe three storeys on a site. You have many buildings scattered around. You usually have plentiful green space uh, and recreation space, uh, the more suburban school design. So the vertical school is very, very different from the more traditional silo school design. Uh, and whilst it might be very different and a non-traditional design, vertical schools still need to provide ed educational and community functions. So that remains absolutely essential. Now there are plenty of international examples to look at and I'm just going to move slightly so that you can see exactly which ones we've displayed here. But there are plenty that you can look at and they all have very different morphology, they all have very different design, they integrate very differently with their communities, they're served differently in terms of access, access to green space, active transport, all of those uh, issues can be quite different. Uh, but one thing that is common about vertical schools internationally is that they're not nearly as new as they are here in Australia. So many countries have a quite a long history of, of working with vertical schools uh, quite successfully. And if you look at our paper from the conference, uh, it really talks about many of those fine international examples. But here in Australia, we have much less uh, familiarity and much less experience. And so we can see the various designs, some of the various designs that might um, uh, appear uh, and be used internationally, and we can learn some valuable lessons from that, but those lessons may or may not apply directly to Australian cities. We're, we're finding that out as we go through high quality research and practice. And so in terms of the Australian imperative around vertical schools, well, we've had several decades of urban consolidation uh, plus population growth, and so that has swelled the populations of our cities and grown our urban communities. And now we have multi-generational urban communities. Uh, and those multi-generational urban communities have in many cases children because we've got lots of families living in cities now. And so those urban communities, they need social infrastructure and they need community hubs. And very traditionally, that's something that a school would have provided. And so in the case of these inner urban communities where vertical schools would be more common, those vertical schools, of course, need to provide that infrastructure and those community hubs as well. And if you want to look at some of the figures in Australia, well, they're a bit confronting to tell you the truth. We're going to need up to 750 new schools to, to uh, educate and provide for this, the close to 1 million extra students that will enter primary and secondary education by 2041. This means that by 2041, we need to construct seven new classrooms on average every working day per annum. And this is going to cost a billion dollars or so of additional extra government expenditure every year also to 2041. Most of that expenditure is going to fall on state governments. So if you look at our paper, that it, our full paper from the conference, you, you'll see where we got these figures from, all fully referenced, but some, some very confronting figures there. So there's a real urgency around, around this particular agenda. Now, there are some early examples of vertical schools in Australia. We have about 10 built so far. We have a few more planned and underway. Uh, but considering the hundreds of schools that we're going to need, we're only really uh, starting to look at the vertical school issue here. And so these, these early designs, these early uh, uh, um, buildings, they might be setting down a marker, but they may not necessarily be the way that we go long term. Uh, these are all much like the international examples I showed you earlier, very different buildings, very different morphology, very different density, uh, very different integration with their communities, very different provision of green space and so on and so forth. All vertical schools though, um, so all meeting that criteria, all located in, in inner urban areas. Uh, we have uh, two there from Melbourne up at the top. We have Halebury College, which is a converted call centre. And then we have Prowran High School, which is a, a, a also a vertical school, a more recent build uh, and a, a very uh, fine example. At the bottom, we have Botanic High, which is in Adelaide. That's two vertical school buildings on one site. And to the left, uh, uh, or to my left at least, we have um, the uh, uh, Fortitude Valley Vertical School in Brisbane, which is just completed and due to open in 2021. So some early pictures of what's, of what's happening here. Um, 
the first 10 or so, as I said, built, a few more planned and on the way, but hundreds required. And so in terms of the vertical school uh, agenda here in Australia, well, what planning priorities should we uh, be considering and paying attention to? Well, we would say that it's very important, first of all, to actively plan to move away from the fatter, sicker, sadder paradigm. Now, fatter, sicker, sadder is uh, uh, a term, an expression, if you like, a phrase that I, uh, I've, I've taken, I've borrowed, um, with full respect to my PhD supervisor, Professor Brendan Leeson, who's down in the University of Melbourne. Brendan came up with this phrase to describe the plight of suburban children who spent all day sitting in school, who were driven to school, driven from school, who didn't interact with nature, who didn't spend time outside, uh, who didn't free play, and the result was their health deteriorated physically and mentally, uh, and they generally were just less well off and felt less satisfied and were less happy. And so we really want to move away from that with the vertical schools um, and, and these, these communities that they're serving in, in urban areas. And so um, we want them to really serve community functions. We want them pro to provide lots of community functions and, and ideally have them be uh, community hubs where, where communities are mixing together and meeting each other and children are playing and have an opportunity to walk together uh, and where active transport is very uh, 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 important and, and possible. So really important to design and build and deliver vertical schools um, that are high quality learning environments as well as providing that community glue. And very important also to remember that the vertical schools that we build today will be with us tomorrow. In fact, they'll be with us for decades. So we need to do it properly as much as we possibly can. If we make big mistakes today, if we don't do our due diligence, if we allow bad designs or, or anything like that uh, to become established in vertical school development, then we could be embedding mistakes and problems uh, uh, and subpar outcomes that will stay with us for, for generations potentially. So we, we, we need to be always conscious that uh, building vertical schools today is a big investment in the future. Um, and so in that regard, it is very essential that we, we plan and design well. But we are really lacking in experience in Australia. It's not that we lack experience in, in building or designing or anything like that, but we don't have a huge degree of experience in this country uh, around designing, building and delivering vertical schools. And, and we do need to scale up pretty quickly. Um, I want to just share with you uh, some positive and negative experiences to date that we've recorded around vertical schools in Australia um, so that you can get a sense of what, what is going on out there and some of the early reports that we're hearing from principals uh, and from parents and others that are using some of the, the vertical schools that have already been developed here. Uh, so on the positive side, many of them are turning out to be quite good integrated spaces. They're integrating well uh, with their communities. Uh, there's good integration between the street and the school, um, good permeability, good capacity for mixing, for active transport, for cycling, for, for walking, um, and for community use of the space. And there's also some reports of communities mixing well together at the school, less cars, for example, meaning more people are walking to pick their children up or drop them off, and so therefore they're spending time around each other, mixing together in a way that they might not otherwise have done, which of course improves social cohesion. Um, reports of vertical schools lending themselves to flexible community uses, uh, everything from uh, uh, nighttime classes to birthday parties we've heard of reports of, which is great because you do want schools to provide that, uh, that community function as well and to provide those spaces, whether they're vertical or horizontal. Um, some very enthusiastic stakeholders as well around vertical schools, as you can imagine, it's something that people are very uh, uh, enthusiastic about, especially parents. Um, in the negative column, we have some discordant conversations. People aren't necessarily talking about the same thing. They may think they are, but they're not. Uh, different views, different uh, perspectives um, in terms of their breadth or their limitation, etc., etc. So there are some discordant conversations. There are lots of ideologies and biases at play. Um, different stakeholders have different ideologies and biases that they can bring to bear for better or for worse. So those, those are occurring and, 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 and are influencing, uh, as they always do in development, of course. Uh, another issue that's occurring here in Australia is that with vertical schools, it's all vision and no template. So each of the ones that have been built so far have primarily been based on architectural visions. We don't have any sort of a template. There's no common design standard for vertical schools here yet. So that is something that we, we really need to look at. Uh, and then, of course, the final negative thing that I'll mention for now is the cost and complexity of bills. Any infill building is more expensive than greenfield building, so that means that, by definition, vertical schools are going to be more expensive. The fact that we don't have templates, the fact that they're on constrained sites in inner urban areas, and so on and so forth, all adds to the cost and complexity of bills. So that is a negative. Um, 
from all of our work, we have discerned uh, a much wider degree of research priorities. And in many cases, these priorities are integrated together across various domains uh, of, 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 uh, of research and, and, and observation. And so I just want to finish by presenting our conceptual framework to you, which we're using to start to really guide our inquiries and research into vertical schools and their, their use and their development and their integration with communities here in Australia. And so I, I just invite you to take some time to look at that on your own. I won't talk about it now, there's too much in it, um, but I'd certainly be very happy to talk about it in the discussion after this presentation. So on behalf of the, the team, I thank you very much for your attention and uh, I look forward to talking more in the discussion after this presentation and please do feel, uh, um, that, uh, uh, please do feel like you can reach out by email. I'd be more than happy to hear from you and uh, certainly will reply quickly and very happy to have conversations and the same applies to all of the team. So thank you very much for your attention and I look forward to talking more in discussion. I, I'm Dr. Tony Matthews, Griffith University. Thank you.